Hello, and welcome to TidyX episode 164. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. Uh, my name's Ellis Hughes. And my name's Patrick Ward. Thanks for checking in with us at TidyX. Always glad to have you. As always, be sure to like and subscribe on the channel down below. Leave your comments, leave your questions. We'd love to get back to you. We'd love to hear what you think of the current series we're doing on Shiny Apps. Uh, and as always, uh, we do have a Patreon page if you'd like to donate to the show. We're always super appreciative of anything that you might like to give. That said, we're jumping into episode 164. We're continuing on with our Shiny Apps. We're doing uh, a little bit more interactivity with yes. Shiny Apps than we've done in the past. And today's episode builds on the last two by basically connecting them so that you can link from one to the other and your users can bounce, you know, from from uh, one shiny app over to the other. Uh, Ellis has the example pulled up. Why don't you walk us through that? Yeah, for sure. So this is our NHL skaters app. This is what we covered in 163. Uh, this is more or less the same. What we've done is we've added a toggle for selecting year because obviously there are many players over the years. They come in and go. So just trying to have a full on database that shows every single player uh, would be kind of horrendous. So now we've sh show it by year, but the functionality is essentially the same um, from the from the selection here standpoint. We've added the unique player ID to their names so that it's easier for somebody to know that they're selecting a, a different player. Uh, but then the links out still go to hockeyreference.com to link out to that. Again, thank you Ho Hockey Reference for providing such great tables. But we've added something that we covered in 160, which was adding shiny queries. And so you can now do que slash question mark year. It will update the year to be automatically what, what you passed there, and then you can select the skaters. But on top of that, we've updated it so you can pass in the skater as well. So you can pass in the skater ID. Let me update this because I had ones entered in. So here you can see I selected Ivan Barbashev, and it's the skater's name. The spaces get converted into percent signs because it's a URL, um, but this is for the year 2024. So it selected Ivan for 2024, and it shows me their stat line uh, of that season or um, uh, the completed season if it's a past year. So that's pretty nice to be able to kind of quickly bop around and select different players and years, but that's that's not really built up on what we've done before. Um, and that's not connecting to another Shiny app. So let's show you that other Shiny app, which we've got brought up over here. This is the episode that we covered in 162, I believe, which was going through and building up a application to let you select a year, select a game, and they'll show you summary stats. Well, now we've added uh, two tables for rosters. And so these are the players that were on the, that played on that game. So we, here we can see the Tampa Bay Lightning uh, versus the Nashville Predators. Tampa Bay had Michael Eismont, Eismont. Sure. my bad man, <laughs> uh, Luke Glendening. Uh, but what you can do now is you can actually click on that name, it'll take you over to our skater app and show you that player's stat line for that year. And, and so now you can go and you can be investigating kind of what's going on, go, oh, I actually was curious what's going on in 2022. Uh, there was a game, I remember watching it, oh, it was uh, the Kraken versus the Golden Knights, the very beginning of the season. Uh, was it that beginning of the season? Yeah, that would be beginning of the season. Oh, and I just remember like, Peyton. Peyton was killing it. I want to know how he did the rest of the season. So you can click on that now. Takes you over to the player URL app. Updates the season. Updates to the selected player. And it'll show you the information about Peyton. Well, it looks like Peyton might have played on a couple different teams. Um, eventually in Vegas. Uh, eventually on the... No. He started at the Vegas team because that would have been beginning, yeah. beginning of the season. Yeah. But you can now go through and see, ah, well, he kind of bopped around a little bit. Um, but, you know, there, he's 21, so he's young. He's a center. Uh, had seven goals with um, Buffalo and Toronto, TOT, Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but, like, you, think... you can go back and see 
all this information about the player while still kind of going back to this. And of course, all the other links out. So like the link to hockeyreference.com to, to see more information about the, the actual game itself uh, still exists. So then you could go see who the goalies were, uh, some advanced statistics, which we're not pulling. So there's a lot of different ways that you can be using this application. Mm -hmm. How does it work, though? Let's go through that because we're already five minutes in. <laughs> so, uh, Les Patrick, you had something else to add about something. No, I was just going to say episode 160 talks about um, the ways in which we pre-populate the Shiny app with the user information. And that, that's what was happening when he when, when Ellis clicks the link from the roster to get over to the player Shiny app. You'll notice in the URL, it's pre-populating. And so you're going to want to check out episode 160 to see the way in which we did that. Yep. Yeah. So okay. now how did we update these apps? Because obviously when we built them before, they weren't built to be interactive necessarily. Like they were made to reach out to hockey reference, but not made to connect to each other. So how did we make it so that we could do that? So the first thing is, uh, in the NHL Players app, which is from episode 163, uh, before we were scraping just for a single year, we've just wrapped this inside of a function so that it can pull for any year that we're interested in. Um, this code is fundamentally the same as what we were doing before, uh, except now it's pulling every row and pulling in the text and the skater URL here, so the, the ID of this the skater. And so it's all the same ideas that we were we had before. It's just now turned into a function. Um, if you want us to go into more detail, leave a comment down below on this. Um, next in the Shiny UI, the only new piece in the Shiny UI is the fact that we have selecting your player year. We've also set the choices and selected to be null because we want the Shiny app to start with no values selected for the player. Um, in the server. Patrick, do you want to go through a, a bit of this? Yeah, so um, because last week's episode with the players was just scraping one season, uh, we didn't need to have the server have this reactive val in these observe events. If you remember two episodes ago when the user was able to define a year, it would reach out to Hockey Reference and grab that data and pull it back. That's what we have going on here. And so in order for that to happen, we have to be able to, once the user specifies a year, reach out to Hockey Reference and grab those players and then make those options available to the user in the select skater box that sits underneath the select year box. And so that's why we need that observe event, which we went in detail in episode 162 on how this works. But you can see here that observe is basically saying, hey, we're going to go through um, uh, and, and go ahead and snag the year reach out to the web page, grab the information about the skaters for that year, and then update the select input box so that they can have each one of those skaters available to them to, uh, to choose. And so that's what we see here with the observe event skaters. Remember, skaters is a reactive, so it has to have the little parentheses after it because it's gonna continually update if they change the year. And so all we're doing there is saying, hey, when uh, observe event, when we observe the event, go ahead and update the select input information um, with the skater information so that those are available to the user so that they can select those players uh, and, and get the information that they're looking for. And then from there, everything else is pretty much standard from last week's episode. Once we get the data, um, we just go ahead and we uh, create a nice DT table. Um, remember, we want that that uh, skater URL to be interactive so that they can click on it and go out to hockeyreference.com. So we make that interactive right there on, on line 153, which we talked about last episode, where we paste together the HTML that we scrape from the website that sits underneath the player's name within the hockey reference HTML. We scrape that, we make that an interactive HTML that's click going to be clickable. And then we select the columns that we want. And then data table, we, we use this argument escape equals false to make sure that that link is hot and can be, and can go out to hockey once it's clicked. Yep. 
Yeah, and so that's mm -hmm. how that the hockey or the the player app works, right? Is it's just accepting new information of oh, you want this year and this player? Cool, I got you, and it'll it'll select them for you. So that's pretty nice, and I, I appreciated the logic that we put in last week because it made it very simple to update this application without having to totally change its UI. So I like how we set that up. Next, we get into the the games uh application here and here there also isn't actually a lot of change that we had to do um but let me scroll up here so now we have the rosters for the game so we updated the nhl game function which was pulling information about you know who scored uh which penalties occurred but we also added some new code pulling in the rosters so we get the all the table elements that existed on that web page there we know that the third table will always be the away roster yeah the away roster so then from that we again read every row pull out the text that we want to keep um, in this case we actually the 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 table is actually pretty wide and has a bunch of information but we wanted this application to be like high level summaries so we're only pulling the rank of the player, the skater, the goals, and the assists, uh, the goals, assist, and the number of points, and then they therefore scored um, because there could have been a shootout or something like that um, for the game. Again, we're pulling out the skater ID, and this is important because in uh, hockey reference, multiple players can have multiple uh, mul multiple players can have the same name. So that's why we need that skater ID information. So we pull all of those in and add that as a, a column inside of our away roster data frame. And we do the same thing for home roster, but this is always going to be table number five. Also note, this is not including goalies. Um, so then we return that in our list that was already, already returning scoring and penalties, but now we have home roster and away roster. So now anytime NHL game is called, we pull that same information. So the code here in the UI is identical to what we had uh, a few weeks ago. So we're not going to go through that. It's um, then we go and in the server, there's only a small a, a, a few small changes that we had to do to make this connect to our uh, player app. So now we have the DTs for our rosters. These are identical other than using the source data uh, to be home roster or away roster. So we'll go through the home roster, but know that this code is identical to the away roster. So we'll um, close that up. So then first thing we need to do is where are we connecting? Where is this shiny app that we want to connect our current NHL games app to the uh, players app that we're running? Well, we know that we plan on running it locally, so we can use the 127001 IP address that we're going to connect to. And we also know the port we're going to run it on, which is going to be port 3333. So what you can say is our base URL is pasting together the shiny host location option and the port. Next, we're going to take the home roster. We're going to mutate it to create the reference URL which is HTTP slash slash the base URL slash now we construct our query. So our query is the year that we've selected that we're looking at. Then it is, or excuse me, it's slash question mark year equals the year that we've selected in the shiny app. Then ampersand skater equals, and then this is where we construct that unique skater id so that is the skater's name and the skater id so we pass those two out uh by and then we paste it together with a dash and we wrap it inside utils url and code and what this will do is it'll convert all the spaces or any special characters that urls can't handle and turn them into um characters that can so spaces become percent 20 basically something like that then we update our skater column because we want that column to be the same. We don't want to create a new column. So we're going to replace this by saying, hey, paste together. Um, 
I don't know why we have two pastes here. My bad. Let's remove that. Uh, paste together a href, that reference URL we just created, target blank set tells um, the website to open it in a new tab whenever you click on that, and then the skater's name. And then you close the a tags. From that, we do remove our ref URL because we don't really want to show that in our DT. And then we add in this escape equals false so that the HTML is preserved. And then we have the same options here to that we were using in earlier DTs in this app to not allow the ability to filter or change the order or things like that. We just want the table. So then at the very end here, we have our update server here. We add the rosters section here, a header four to show the home team, a header four here to show the visitor team, and the two DT outputs for those two DTs that we just created. So cool, we've got our two shiny apps and we can run them independently. We could run them manually, not a big deal. You can just go click in here, you know, do run app, you know, select run and viewer pane and, and do that. But you can't, the, the thing about shiny apps, if you run them from your R Studio or R session, is that it's running in that current R session. So it locks it, right? You can't run uh, more code in your current console without, uh, it just doesn't run, right? It blocks your current R session. So how are we going to get both of these to run? In the past, what we've done is we've opened up another R Studio session and balanced between the both of them, and that's kind of a pain. But there's a better way. Um, and so I wanted to show you this. So this is an easy way that I think to connect these two together. I've also not seen this before. If you have seen this before and seen other people do this, Leave a comment down below because they're, uh, that's pretty cool that we've all we've kind of coalesced on the same sort of idea here. Patrick, do you want to explain this? Uh, so we're going to use the call R uh, uh, library, which allows us to open those two shiny app, uh, shiny apps simultaneously. Um, so uh, you start up the whole process here with the R underscore session dollar sign new function, uh, which gets this basically going. And then from here, um, pretty easy. We're just basically saying for the player app, we're going to call, call takes a function. Um, so it's going to be a function that basically runs the shiny app. This is our typical run shiny app function that we've used before. And um, the app directory is basically pointing to where we're storing that player app. And we're just saying that, uh, uh, hey, we want to open this one in port 3333. The next thing we do is we open up a port to run the game app. Um, so again, we're just going to call a new R session. We're going to um, game app process dollar sign call. It takes a function. That function is the run app, which we've used before. We have the app directory set where the code for the game app is, is housed. And we're just saying, hey, R, run this in port 222. So now we have two shiny apps open in two different ports. And then below that, um, we just open them right up in the browser with their specific ports. And you can see that the information um, contained in the, in, the, in the browse URL right there is what is also was contained in uh, the code in, in those apps. So there was uh, information uh, in the game app about, um, you know, what was it? 127.010.3333, whatever. Yep. Yeah, the, the, port, the port information was there. And so now it just knows what to do. And so now we have these two shiny apps running. And um, as we saw in the, at the start of the uh, episode, uh, we, we select a season or no, select player, do that, choose your skater, and you can link out to um, hockey reference. You can go to the games oh. tab, you choose a season. Oh. There, we, there go. we go. And pick a team or a game. We get some rosters. We can crank on a player there. It's going to open up a shiny app with that player's data for that given season pulled in. And then of course, if we said, oh, I want to get information about his draft, 
we just go to hockey reference and it's contained right up there in the top and we can see all the relevant and pertinent information for that player um, should we need more and that is how we got the two shiny apps to talk together yep exactly so yeah if you've not used call r before i think it's a pretty fun and uh powerful r library that i don't think we've ever talked about in in this um in tidy x so if you want to learn more about call r leave a comment down below so we know that you're interested in kind of more advanced or kind of fun unique quirky ways that you can use r to do more things where this is actually opening up opening up a new r session in the background that we can send stuff to and pull stuff out of so it doesn't block our current r session but there are some tricks to it so it's not simple like oh yeah it's just running a new r session and you just like act like normal there are some other tricks that you need to know about this but let us know if you uh if you want to know more about that uh with that somehow we managed to teach you and show you how in 21 minutes how you too could run two or more shiny apps that are all connected to one another and you can kind of jump between all of them and pull information and and have that be really valuable for your team so you can have a web of shiny applications that all talk to one another um, to supercharge your uh, impact into your organization. So with that, I guess we're going to call episode 164 of TidyX. Thank you so much for joining. As always, my name is Ellis Hughes, and you can find me on various social media sites at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on Twitter at X at, at OSP Patrick, and you can find the screencast at X at at tidy underscore explained of course the youtube channel is the best way to get in touch with us like subscribe comments down below we do have a patreon page for anyone that would like to donate to the show we're very appreciative of your support and that is episode 164 thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world